Welcome to Victory Life Today with Al and Angie Burke. A place to connect, to grow, and to cultivate your faith in Christ. Together, we'll learn how to stand in victory each and every day. Live a life set ablaze by faith, filled with purpose. Live life above your circumstance. Welcome to Victory Life Today. I'm Al Burke. And I'm Angie Burke. Thanks again for joining us. We're happy you're here. It's going to be a great message today on prayers of faith. Okay, because it's one thing to just pray, and normally our prayers are kind of filled with begging or pleading, and they do not have to be. It's not, God only, and I don't want to use the word respond, because he did everything he's going to do, but he hears the prayers of faith. He doesn't hear prayers of worry and fear and unbelief. So we want to make sure we're praying in faith, and faith simply, Al, is believing that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. I mean, Believing you know, what the Bible says. I, you know, I heard Andrew Womack just the other night, and he said, uh, we just all finished taking communion, and people got up and started talking the exact opposite of what we went to communion for. And wow. he said, we just had communion because there was no faith involved on those people's part when they were taking communion. It was just an action, something they were doing. Right, right. It was just movement. Isn't that something? Well, you know, like praying prayers for faith means you're praying what the Bible says regardless of what's happening to you at the time. That's really good. So if if they were going to do it right and they prayed and took communion, then they would get up and say, and now I know I'm healed and I know I'm not going to get this virus. I know I'm going to be strong because the Bible says I'm healed right, already. Instead, right. they were talking about their sickness and disease. Right. And we right. all do it. It's something yeah, we have to learn to fear. not do. Um, in James chapter 5, verses 13, we'll start with verse 13. It says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Now, now you know, this, this suffering doesn't only mean physically. It could be mentally. And a lot of times, Christians just are tormented. They're tormented with fear and worry, and they're tormented with the what-ifs of the future. And so when, when we could be suffering either way, physically. And you know what? If you are suffering physically, then you are suffering mentally. Because it brings a mental sure. attitude. You just get you know, down. And your mind is on it all the time, you know? So so people pray when they're suffering. I mean, that's obvious. And they may suffer for years because they're praying with no faith. And there's a difference. They're mostly begging. But the problem is, Jesus took away our suffering at the cross 2,000 years ago. And people get mad at me. They go, don't you tell me. I know what I'm suffering. I know what I'm feeling in my body. Now, it's okay to ask God for wisdom in the midst of that suffering, okay? But to ask God to take it away, when he would say to you, my grace is sufficient for you, which means you take your authority, I've equipped you. God has equipped you and me and all of us who are born again. He's equipped us with everything we need, every every our, uh, weapon we need to fight the sickness that's trying to come on us. And he even told Paul, look, my grace is sufficient for you. Even though it wasn't a physical thing, Paul was suffering mental anguish because people were coming against him. You know, persecution. Yes, they were. They were persecuting him. And he and God said, look, my grace is sufficient. He wouldn't just wipe the people out. Yeah. And you don't need to let them destroy you. You begin to take, knowing God's already done it all, right. you begin to operate in faith, you stop praying in faith, believing what the Bible says about right. the situation. And what happens is we're always praying, God, get them. <laughs> God, yeah. get rid of them. God, move right. them out. Instead right. of saying, God, give me wisdom. Right. Right. You know, we, we, we were, right. Go ahead. We no, were just talking about uh, somebody that turned into a, like a riot situation. And God, he made a left. And God was saying, make a right. But we don't always do it. Then we're, we're in trouble. You know, they got out of it. It was fine. God showed up. But here's the point of the story. Pray for wisdom as to what to do instead of doing the wrong thing and then saying, Lord, get those 
persecutors offer me. And I will say this, you have to act fast many times. Yeah, Al, no, you it's, know, it's you not can't easy. you can't say give me wisdom and then go go sit on the corner for 3 hours until God gives you wisdom. You know, you have to act and but but know this no matter what you do, God is with you and he's surrounding you and he's helping you. And if you if you do the wrong thing or you mess up or you just uh whatever it is happens so fast and you made a decision, he's there to pick you up. The angels are there to 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 surround you, you know. I but you know, talking about prayers of of faith, I I was in a Bible study, believe it or not, very good church. And after the Bible study, I heard these two grandparents talking at another table right next to me, and they were completely tormented. They were upset. They were. They said they were praying to God over. They were both talking about their grandsons who prop, who were best friends and they were doing drugs and they were doing bad stuff. And they just, there was never ending cycle in these families. And they were just having what Al would call a pity party. And they talked to each other about it. And I kept hearing them say, but God's not answering my prayer. I don't know why he won't do this. I don't know why he won't do that. They were completely praying the wrong way. And God honors faith. He doesn't honor worry and fear because that's not even part of him. He has already provided the answer. And if you don't believe it, you're going to be in unbelief, of course, and that's going to stop you from seeing the answers. So it's it's faith that pleases God and releases the grace of healing. And it says, is anyone merry? Let him sing psalms. And singing worship to God also is a form of praying. You know, Alan, I do that a lot. And you're recognizing his awesomeness, your his faithfulness toward you in any situation. You know, you were talking about those two grandparents talking about what was whatever the situation right. was. And, oh, God, you're not answering my prayers. Oh, God, oh, God, they're going down and down. They're not praying anything in alignment with the Bible. It's no. all a big pity party. Everything's shot. Everything's bad. And what's God supposed to do with that? The right way to pray when you're in those situations is, Lord, this is a bad situation. But you know what? I know what your Bible says, and I know you're going to bring my grandchildren out. You're going to bless them. I know, Lord, you're, you're a faithful God. Lord, we are thanking you that you're already working on his or her heart, That's and right. you're going to bring them in. Instead of, oh, God, have you seen that kid? He's an idiot. He's going to kill himself. Oh, God, yeah. when you do something. Right, right, right. God won't go past your will. Right. <clears throat> and so he won't go past that person, your grandchild's will, but he can create a circumstance around him. He can protect him. Right. He can so. create circumstances where it's like, oh, okay, I think I need to do this. Pray that way. Don't pray that. Right. God wants to be trusted and believed. You have to pray like in alignment with the Bible. Right. You you can't pray, God, you're not doing a good job. You know what was sad out? These people attended this church. It's a non-denominational church for years and years and years, and they still didn't know how to pray. And I'm not I'm not putting it all on the pastor, but you think they would have learned some things over the years. Maybe they just were closed off to it. Maybe they don't read their Bible, whatever they don't it is. Know anything. Yeah, they were don't. blaming God. You know, and it's never God's fault. But back to the praising and the worshiping, it's easy to praise God. It's easy to worship Him when things are going great, oh, when yeah, things no. are going well. But how about doing that in the midst of the battle? That's what uh, that's what's called the sacrifice that's of praise. That becomes powerful now. Right. So whether you're happy or sad, you praise and you worship the Lord. And that's part of prayers of faith. Because praying, worship is praying, and praying is worship. They go you know, together. in together. So when you're worshiping, you're praying the right way. It's faith. Because who would do that in the midst of a battle? You Which, have to have faith. What you have to have faith. <laughs> what you have to do in the midst of the battle is do what I was saying. Start looking for the good that God's doing in a situation. Right. And start saying, Lord, I know you're going to fix this situation. And I know, you know what? Take an inventory of what you have, not what you don't have. And start thanking God for what you do have and what he has done in your life. That's good. You know, I was just watching TV this morning and... <clears throat> Uh, it was like a commercial. I don't remember what it was. But the girl came up, kind of come up to the stop sign and sort of ran the stop sign. And the cop pulled her over and she went over to the side and she said to the cop, I wish this had never happened. Mm -hmm. And then it flicked to if it had never happened. Okay. And if the cop hadn't been there and she went through the stop sign and it showed this terrible accident. 
So, you know, you realize wow. maybe God's working more than you know in this situation. That's right. And maybe he knows things that you just, she didn't know she would have got killed in this action. Yeah. She just said, I wish I hadn't gotten this ticket. Right. Wish this hadn't happened. But it happened for a reason. I'm not saying everything is like that. I'm just saying right. take an inventory of the good. So you ran a stop sign, you got a, a, a ticket. Thank God that you have a car. Mm -hmm. Thank God that you can drive it. Thank God you got gasoline for it. Thank mm -hmm. God that you even can get a ticket and pay for it. Yeah, I know. We, we have, <laughs> I have a dentist appointment on thir a Thursday morning, and they gave me a 6.30 a.m. And right. I said, how? I said, 6.30 a.m.? I said, you know, I'm not much of a morning person. I said, I don't, I don't know what to do. And he said, look. Start thanking God that you have the appointment. We have a car to get there. I'm going to drive you. This is going to be taken care of. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. That's faith. Yeah, what I, I was doing. Well, yeah, really. What I was doing was unbel unbelief. You were an unbelief. It was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I was fun? bringing it into perspective. Yes, you, you know, correctly. 100 years ago, 150 years ago, they didn't have a dentist. <laughs> and if they did, it was awful. Um, so you need to start thanking God right. for what you do have. I got some dentist. It's not going to, they're going right. to take care of me. They're going to do the Novocaine thing. Start thanking God for what you do have right. and the way it's working out instead of looking at all of the, I got to get up at 5 a.m. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. You see, I would just roll out of bed and go. <laughs> That's what you do no matter what time. So, okay. So let's go to verse 14 now. And, and in, in verse 14, it says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith, faith. the prayer of faith, will save the sick, wow. and the Lord will raise him up. You, you know, you look at that, and he says, back in these days, they didn't have any dentists, they didn't have any doctors when this was written. Mm. And he says, "Is there any sick among you?" It's, all, it's almost like we don't have any sick people here. Like they got to go looking wow. for them. Wow. Do you know what I mean? And today in this modern society, everyone is on some kind of medication. Right, like you could go into a big crowd and say, is there anybody that's well? <laughs> yeah, it's more the other way. <laughs> right? Because. And within the church. Yeah. Is there anybody yes. that's well? That's really sad. It's the other way. You know, this should be the way you just said. It should be, is there anybody sick? Because And, and there right. shouldn't be anybody that says they should go, no, I'm good. You're good. Yeah, I'm healthy. I'm a Okay, let's go down with the service. Well, is there any sick among you? That is amazing. It's Al. kind of like, you know, it doesn't say it, but it's kind of the inference is we don't have any sick people here. We're always looking. Is anybody sick? Wow. Wow. That's the way it You know what I mean? Be. You know, and I think a lot of it just has to do with, you know, we have choices today too. Like a lot of the social media, everyone's on social media. It brings stress. We just saw a thing on Net Netflix the other night. I forget the name of it. And it was the dangers of the social media and how it really reprograms your brain and it, and it, and it makes you a person entirely different than, than who you really thought you were or were. And you know, you become belligerent, you become mad and angry, you go out and you do things you would never have done before because you're connecting with that evil. A lot of it is not evil, you know, right. but, but, but I understand that. And, uh, and it's just that it makes you sick in your mind. It's destroying your, you know, I always say, I, I, I'm not saying just social media can be a mind altering drug. Okay. Just like these drugs out there that are actually mind altering social media could do that too. And our young people do not know the limits. They don't care about limits. And as I heard a, a in this show documentary or, or somewhere else, I don't remember these, the principal of the school would say, I, I, try everything to get these kids off of their cell phone and they get off of it for two seconds and then they go around the corner and get back on it. There's a true addiction with this. And I think that people are suffering, the young people are suffering more mentally than physically because the physical stuff hasn't caught up with them yet, you know, even though they're They'll eating get all this stuff. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but, the, but the torment in the mind that it's doing is just, it's just awful. And, and they live and die by that phone. Yeah. And it, it really, it's just... You know, they Facebook admitted that they designed this to be addictive. They admitted it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, well, this, this you know, young kids don't that. understand they're young. They don't yeah. get what's going on. They're just so into all of this. And um and guess what? Like you said, 
it's a mental problem, but they yes. will get physically sick from this yes. if they stay on it long enough. That upset about everything instead of releasing yes. the debt. Right. Okay, it doesn't matter. I forgive. Right. And it's all designed to make you not forgive. It's designed to get you all upset mentally. Right. And I know many Christians are on Facebook. I'm putting Facebook down. It's all social media. Okay. Whatever yeah, it is, all social media. And people would say to me, you have to go on Facebook. You have to do Facebook. You have to do Facebook because it's a way to witness. Well, guess what? God chose this as a way for us to witness. And there are other ways. And I figure there are so many other people on there witnessing that they can do without me. It's okay. You know, but anyway, uh, that's a personal preference. But we're talking about prayers of faith. It's And, and look at it. It's the prayers of faith. So, okay. So, this is really a person with the faith that is praying for the sick. So, how much responsibility does the sick person have and how this is saying prayers of faith okay so if somebody comes to me and i'm i'm the one praying that's what's important it's your not, faith that's active. but what about the sick person what well, part you know, do they it helps that the more they believe but if they don't if they come to you and say pray for me that's faith enough you know, Al, I'm in total agreement with that because when Jesus was walking the face of the earth, nobody believed nothing. They just wanted a healing. Yeah. And Jesus knew that. You know, so I really do believe that. Like the woman with the issue of blood, you know, she was desperate. She didn't probably necessarily even know he was the Messiah. She didn't. She just wanted a healing. She was desperate. And her faith wasn't anywhere near where, where God wants us to have it, and yet he healed everyone. So you know, he did it regardless of their faith. Right. Now, they had to have enough faith to come to him. But you know, And I know somebody who, uh, he's got a rare kidney disease, and he's gone to every healing evangelist there is. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm not healed, I'm not healed, God's not healing me. But every doctor tells him, you should have been dead 10 years mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. We forget that part of it. Yeah, he's suffering with it. Yes, he is. But he's still going. He's still working. Exactly. So, you know, the, maybe the faith of the people who prayed for him, maybe, I don't know what's, I don't know the situation exactly, but he's still going. He's still alive. Now, yes. You know what I mean? The, pr yes. the prayer of the faith healer, maybe there is something in his life isn't letting it be full manifestation. So, Sometimes you've been prayed for something and, and you don't see it leaving your body, but you're still alive and you're still going. He goes to work every day. He's just kind of normal. And it's like, how do you do this? They, they just look at him like. But I do want to say one thing to the people out there. Don't. Don't think you don't have any responsibility. When you have somebody pray for you, they're actually coming into agreement with you. And you have to make sure that, yes, going up there is a sign of believing and faith, but it also just could be desperateness. And, you know, and... And that's okay, uh, and, too. And woe is me. It is okay, too, and you still can receive a healing. But, it, but if you feel that this is too much for me. I I really, I'm coming up, I've got cancer, this person's gonna pray for me, but did Jesus really take my cancer? I really don't know. You could go to the Lord right now and you can ask him to help your unbelief because everybody's got unbelief in one area or another. And I think unbelief comes when you don't see that healing come right away and you don't get that instant miracle and then you go on and on and on for years and, and you tend to believe less and less and less rather than more. You know, so just ask God to help you with any unbelief that you might have, you know, wow. but very few people believed in Jesus's time. Very few people believed, but he healed them anyway. Look at Paul right. with the handkerchief. Yeah. You know, his handkerchief it, brought healing. His handkerchief brought healing. You know wow. what? They saw that. They said, oh, my God, this is healing. You know what I mean? And look at this, Al. It says this in verse 15 and 16. And if he has committed any sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. Look at this. Confessing your offenses toward another is directly linked to the healing of your body. Now, I'm not saying like if you have a list of things you've been doing wrong to just go to somebody and just tell them all that. I think this is more talking about um, 
if you have something against somebody else, if you have maybe unforgiveness and and uh, and you're offended at something, yeah, that that I think would be first and foremost here that that it's directly linked to your healing. It's just that you may be healed. But even if you're doing something else and you need, so you're, you're in sin of some kind and you need help, you can go and talk to somebody about that and, and confess that to somebody. That's what the body of Christ is for. Make sure you go to the right, correct person. And, uh, and then your body. But boy, I see this directly linked to the healing of our bodies. And here, here's an example of a righteous man praying. In verse 17, Elijah was a man subject to natural passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the earth brought forth its fruit. Now, Elijah was a normal person, just like you and me. You don't have to be a super-duper Christian to see results. No. You know, I was just thinking about, as you were talking, I was thinking about what you just said, how that um, backing up a, a bit. Here's, mm -hmm. uh, it says here, uh, confess your offenses towards one another is directly linked to healing of your body. Maybe if you're sick, you need to examine yourself and what you're doing and what you're saying. That's really good. You know what I mean? Maybe you should examine yourself and say, wait a minute, he just said here, if I'm willing to release the offense... Yeah. Just love people, change the whole way I do business. It your body will heal naturally. You don't even have to pray. I know. I mentioned this in the in uh, yeah, one of the other programs one, about people. Yeah, this one particular person is getting worse, sicker and sicker because of the anger and and uh, and you know I know somebody else who's suffering from Alzheimer's and I don't know. I'm not a doctor and I'm not claiming that this is true. Okay, but they say people uh, that are are not forgivers or their unforgiveness. Right. They tend to have Alzheimer's. They tend to or get dementia. Alzheimer's. Those people who hold the grudge and will not release and will not forgive, they said there's a tendency of them, and I'm not. I'm just going by what yeah, I heard. We don't know to for get sure. Alzheimer's. Right, right. And this that, particular woman, I thought of her right away, and she has never forgiven anybody in her entire life. Right. And never. she's suffering in her 80s from this now. But again, that's something I am not going to touch other than that. And it's very interesting. She so, um, and then it says in verse 19, Brothers, if any one of you strays from the truth and someone corrects him, let him know that he who converts the sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. So rather than judging someone for backsliding or being in sin as a Christian, you need to try to minister the grace and truth to them and show them this. Rather than saying, stop sinning, which everybody knows when they're sinning yeah, and they when they need to it. stop. Absolutely. You could say, you don't have to sin. You, there's a better way. You don't need to do this. Because when we sin, I guess it's just a, a lack of trust in God to provide happiness for us or whatever it is. But just to try to restore that person rather than being so judgmental. And, uh, and so this is, this is the ending part of James, you know, and, and just to bring the person into a relationship and show them out because many people are in sin. And I'm talking about sin, ongoing Serious, yeah. sin. Because they just think God's mad at them. And they know that they cannot they cannot get past that. So why not just do this? He's gonna be mad at me anyway, you know? But I don't know. But you know, um you've got books on this, uh that we've written. We've written a lot of books on yeah. some of these subjects. One of them but, is, you know, like uh Oh, no, let me show you this one. Oh, hope, okay. for your, hope for your children. I was children. thinking of hidden treasures. Treasure. No, no, hope for your children, even when things don't look so good, because this is this has in this, you know, this is about a lot of children who are rebelling and, again, the social media thing and just straying away from the house and, and just leaving the home or whatever it is, just a rebellious teenager, maybe on drugs, maybe whatever it is. I, I don't know, but your prayers of faith are vital. And this is what we were talking about, prayers of faith. Believe in God that he will restore your family and restore your child. It may take years. I'm not promising anything overnight, but if you get this book, this will help you to learn how to pray in faith for your children. Correctly, as we Correctly. were talking about, instead of crying the blues and the big pity party about your children to God. 
Right. This, this book would really help you. I'd recommend you need this book. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Hope for your children even when things don't look so good. So you could go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org and get your copy of this. This is really phenomenal. I've had a lot of feedback on this book, and it's helped so many parents because they just simply don't know how to pray correctly and pray in faith. God is for you. He is for your children. He is for your family. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be free in your mind and free of fear. So again, go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org and get your copy of Hope for Your Children. You will be blessed. We hope you enjoyed it. We want you to continue to pray in faith, believing God. You know, God wants believers to just believe Him. Mm -hmm. He wants to be trusted. To do all that and go to the cross and then not be not feel like he's trusted is just horrible. I think I think that we need to examine ourselves, like you said. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate that you did. And remember, victory is always yours through Jesus Christ. We'll see you next time. We would like to offer you a brand new online video series called What's a Parent to Do Even When Things Don't Look So Good? Living in today's culture, our kids are struggling as they face serious temptations that just a few years ago we could not even conceive in our minds. This series is for you, the parent, caregiver, or guardian, and is meant to both equip and encourage you as you face these challenges with your teens or young adults. This series consists of eight video teachings, along with a digital study guide and a copy of our book, Hope for Your Children. Grab your spouse, grab a friend, or your small group, and don't miss out on this brand new series, What's a Parent to Do? Go to whatsaparent.com and get started on the road to total restoration, both for you and your children. Although our children may be struggling with some serious temptations in today's culture, we encourage you, the parent, not to despair. Stress and anxiety, unhealthy relationships, and unwise decisions are leaving our children spiraling downhill and leaving our families feeling somewhat hopeless. What do we do? How much do we do? What does the Bible say? God's Word defines hope as a joyful and confident expectation of good. This book, Hope for Your Children, Even When Things Don't Look So Good, was designed to equip you, the parent, caregiver, and guardian, to deal with some of the struggles you may be facing with raising teenagers and even young adults. You will learn how to remain in peace and joy, believing and expecting God to heal and restore your family. And He will bring restoration because He loves you. And with God, all things are possible. Go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org and get your copy of Hope for Your Children today. Victory Life Ministries was founded to help you connect, grow, and flourish in a relationship with Jesus. Al and Angie Burke are committed to teaching the body of Christ how to walk in strength, in boldness, in love. Connect with us online today at VictoryLifeMinistries.org. You'll find the encouragement, inspiration, and resources you need to stand in victory each and every day. Join in on a growing community of believers that are partnering to bring these messages all over the world. With your help, we can make a change. We can shift the atmosphere. Live your best life. Live an effective life full of faith, hope, and vision. Live life above your circumstance.